will show you how to make a bracelet using black beads. I will also use this pyrite bead and some metal beads. We shall also need some findings. To open and to close the bracelet I will need this clasp, lobster claw clasp, some cord end, I will also need some jump rings and some crimps. For the beads I will need some black cord. I will use this nylon cord. And um, in order to create a mm, bracelet I will need uh, tools. I have here some of the tools. For the nylon cord I will use the lighter as well as the scissors. For the jump rings I will use the pliers, the chain nose pliers and the jump ring opener. And for the crimps I will use the crimping pliers. In order to put the beads on the string, on the cord, I will use a big eye beading needle. And to measure the length of the cord, I will, of the yarn, I will use the measuring tape. So let's begin with the uh, measuring the length of the yarn. So around my wrist I will need about 6 inches of uh, beads. That is about 16 centimeters. So I will need a piece of yarn that is longer than that. So I will use about 40 centimeters of yarn, that is about 15 and a half inches. The first step will be to create a knot at the end of the yarn. Now I will put the yarn on the the thread on the big eye beading needle like this. And I will take one of those crimps, put the crimp on the needle. As you can see, I put the crimp on the needle and I will bring the crimp until it gets to the uh, knot and it stops at the knot. Now I will take the pliers. and close the crimp.
And now I will take one of those I will take one of those um, cord ends and I will make sure that my uh, knots with my crimp are inside the cord end. And with the pliers I will press on the cord end And close the cord end. So now I have closed the cord end and it presses on my knot this way. The next step will be to take one of the jump rings and open it. In order to open the jump ring I will grab it with the pliers and I will open it with the jump ring opener. I will put the jump ring through my cord end and I will put the lobster claw clasp on the jump ring. And now I can close the jump ring using the pliers and the jump ring opener this way. And this is the end of my bracelet. And now I will take the needle, the big eye beading needle and put the thread on the big eye beading needle. Like this. And I will start adding the beads. Uh, this way and now I will put the first metal charm I will put the hematite bead which will indicate the middle of the bracelet and then I'll put the second metal charm this way and I can add the remaining beads like this. Um, and now we need to close the bracelet. Um, before I close the bracelet 
I would like to add the fact that the beads should not be too uh, close to each other, but they should uh, also not be too loose, so that they can uh, they will stay uh, on the wrist without being too compressed. Now, I will again make a knot here at the end of the yarn of the thread and now that we have a knot here I will again take the cord end put it on this thread here and close making sure that my uh, cord end presses on the knot like this and I'll make sure that the basis of my cord end presses on the thread blocking the knot from, from sliding out this way And now I will cut the end of the thread I will burn with the lighter and I will take the jump ring open it Now I will put the jump ring on the cord end like this and I will also use an extender chain which is about 5 centimeters long and I will now close the jump ring this way so as you can see this will be the extension chain which will allow the user about five centimeters or two inches long and this way when you wear the bracelet you can decide how long how uh, long the bracelet should be you can make it larger or you can make it smaller and now let's see what the bracelet looks like so this is what the bracelet looks like and this is what the bracelet looks like if I take the bracelet off my wrist so as you can see with the extender chain I can decide how long the bracelet will be and the pyrite a bead marks the central part of my bracelet and the two sides are symmetrical so I hope you liked this video and now you know how to make a bracelet with metal beads I will show you how to make a bracelet for this bracelet I will use lava stones these black lava stones and some metal beads I have chosen different types of metal beads and 
also use a toggle clasp. Um, besides uh, the beads uh, and the toggle clasp, I will also need some findings. And I have chosen for the end of my string these bead ends. I will also need some crimps, two crimps, and some thread. I have chosen this nylon thread, black nylon thread. Uh, now that we um, Now that we have talked about the um, findings and the beads, let's also talk about the tools. First of all, I will need some pliers and I've chosen these uh, chain nose pliers, which have a, a pointed tip, uh, so that I can work with small items, such as those small findings. I will also need uh, a needle, a big eye beading needle, for the jump rings, I will need a jump ring opener. And for the thread, I will need some scissors to cut the thread. And I will also need the lighter in order to burn the end of the thread. Because it is nylon, um, the flame will melt the plastic and the knots, for example, will not open anymore. So. If you're ready, let's begin with the bracelet. First of all, let's talk about the uh, length of the thread. Um, I will measure around my wrist. And as you can see, the length is uh, 6 inches. Let's see also in centimeters. It's about 15, 15 and a half centimeters. Therefore, I will need a thread that is longer. So let's see, I have chosen about 37 centimeters, that is about 14 inches and a, and a half. So that I can also make the knots and use the big eye beading needle. The first step is to make a knot at the end of my thread. I'll try to make a larger knot because we use a, a bead end for the end of the cord and as you can see this bead end has this orifice here and the knot inside of this bead should be large enough so that it doesn't slip out through this I don't know if it's visible through this orifice here. So as you can see the orifice is um, large enough so that a small knot would easily slip out through this hole here. So let's make the knot. If you want to make sure that the knot does not open, you can also use a pair of pliers like this to make sure that the knot is not opening. So let's make several knots. So I think we have enough knots here and now I will put the thread on the big eye beading needle like this and I will take one of those crimps and put it on the needle. 
this way. So I have brought the crimp next to the uh, knot. I will take the pliers and press on our crimp like this. So as you can see, I pressed on the crimp. The crimp stops the uh, knot from uh, slipping. And now, I think like this, it's more visible. So as you can see, the crimp blocks the knot from slipping. I will cut with the scissors the end of this thread and I will use the lighter to burn the end of this thread like this and now again I will put the thread into the needle and I will take the bead cap and I'll put the bead cap on my needle like this and as you can see let's see from a closer distance now you can see that the crimp together with the knot stops the thread from slipping out of the bead cap. Now the next step will be to take the pliers, the chain nose pliers and close the bead cap like this. I've closed the bead cap. I will take a jump ring. Uh, now the next step is to take some jump rings. So I will take one jump ring, open it. So I will grab it with the pliers and I will open it with the jump ring opener. This way. And now I will put the jump ring through my bead end let's open it a bit more let's see if it works now like this. So I have put the jump ring through my bead end and now let's put the toggle clasp. And close the jump ring like this. And the end of our bracelet is ready. Now the next step is the simple one. We simply put the beads on our thread. So all we have to do is take the beads and put them one by one on our thread. The only thing that we have to take into consideration is to 
keep the symmetry. So I will put the beads one by one. So I will put a metal bead, then a lava stone, another metal bead, another lava stone. Now let's put the uh, metal beads that will be in the middle. Now let's put the central metal bead like this. And as you can see, we have reached the middle of our bracelet. And from this point on, we simply have to take into consideration that the beads must be symmetrical. Like this. So this was the last bead. So our bracelet, the bracelet beads are ready now. And now I will put the second bead cap. Whenever we put the second cap, bead cap, we have to take into consideration that the beads must not be too compressed so we must leave a bit of thread so that the beads can move they are not fixed stuck one to each other that um, so that but they must not uh, also not be too loose because if they are too loose then we will see the thread in between the beads And now, the first step will be to take the bead cap and open it, so that we can work in the middle of the bead cap. So with the second cap, it's uh, more important to have space here, so I will try to open it as much as I can, so that I can work in the inside of the bead cap. And I will put the bead cap on my needle, like this. And I will take a crimp and also put the crimp on the needle. And now I will remove the thread from the needle and put the needle away. Let's see from a closer distance, like this. So as you can see, what do we have here? We have the crimp, we have the bead cap, which is opened, and the thread. And now I will take the pliers, the chain nose pliers, and I will press on the crimp, but so that I leave a bit of space to the beads for the beads to move, so they must not be too close to each other. And I will press on the crimp. And now, as you can see, I hope that it is visible. I pressed I 
pressed on the crimp and the crimp is pressing on the thread so that the it blocks the movement of our bead cap so the bead cap will stop at the point where the crimp is because the crimp has been compressed and it presses on the thread now above the crimp I will make a few knots to make sure that the crimp does not slide and does not allow the thread to uh, does not allow the thread to slip out so you have to be careful this is why I opened the bead cap so that I can make the knots as close as possible to the crimp so that they are masked by the bead cap so I made one knot let's make sure that it's not opening and then I will make a few more knots So let's make one more knot. Now that we made several knots here, let's make sure that the knots are tight so that they don't open. And now I will take the scissors, cut the thread, take the lighter and burn the end of the thread like this. And now I can close the bead cap so that I cover the knot and the crimp which is inside. Let's take the pliers and close this bead end like this. And now I will take the second jump ring and open the jump ring with the pliers and with the jump ring opener like this let's open it a bit more so hopefully it goes through the like this so it went through the bead cap I will also put the toggle clasp and close the jump ring like this so now I've closed the toggle clasp and let's close the bracelet and see what it looks like. Our finished bracelet. So this is what our finished bracelet looks like. And it le let's see also what it looks like on the wrist. So this is what a toggle clasp looks like and the bracelet. So this is the finished bracelet. I hope that you liked the video and that you know how to create a bracelet with toggle clasp and metal beads. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked the video. I will show you how to make a china bracelet using this, these porcelain, these china beads. I have chosen china beads with um, those uh, black decorations in the shape of flowers. And I also chose some beads that are black and they also have some flower decorations 
on their surface. I don't know if they are so easily visible. And I also chose this black metal, this um, silver metal bead for the center of my bracelet. And um, besides uh, the beads, I will also use this bead cap for the end of the bracelet and some other types of bead caps for my beads. I will close the bracelet with this toggle clasp and we shall also need some findings so um, I will use for the ends of my bracelet these bead caps which mask the knots and the crimps at the end of the bracelet some crimps and of course the jump rings so um, if you uh, create handmade jewelry the jump ring will be the finding that you will use the most uh, often so you use jump rings for all types, almost all uh, types of jewelry that you create for bracelets, um, necklaces, anklets uh, most of the, even for uh, earrings all, almost all jewelry types require these uh, jump rings and of course we shall need some string, some thread I chose some nylon thread, black nylon thread um, and to assemble all these pieces we need the tools as tools I will use a pair of chain nose pliers as you can see they have a pointed tip so that I can grab small findings, small items with the pliers for the jump rings, I will also use a jump ring opener or a second pair of pliers. Um, I will need a big eye beading needle for the beads, to put the beads on the thread. For small items, I can use a pair of pincers if I can't grab the findings with my uh, fingers. And for the thread, I will need a pair of scissors and a lighter. In order to know how long the bracelet should be, I will use the measuring tape. So I have a measuring tape here which has both centimeters and inches. So these are the tools, the findings and the beads that I will use for the bracelet. So if you are ready, let's begin. The first step is to measure the length of the bracelet. So I will put the measuring tape around my wrist to see how long the bracelet should be. As you can see it's 6 inches long, about 16 centimeters. If you make a bracelet for men, of course you can add one more inch or one inch and a half. It's always uh, useful if you know for whom you make the bracelet to measure the wrist so that the dimensions are as precise as possible. So, um, let's begin with the thread. So if I had six inches the length of the bracelet like this I will add a few more inches so that I can make all the knots and put the beads on the um, thread so I have cut a bit of thread which is about 12 inches long so about 30-31 centimeters long of course you can cut it shorter but um, I uh, chose 12 inches so that I can have enough uh, thread to do all the operations of knotting and of putting the beads and so on. Uh, I will take the big eye beading needle and 
the first step is to create a knot at the end of the thread. This knot will be masked by my bead end. As you can see, this bead uh, cap here at the end of my uh, bracelet has a hole here in the middle. So the knot that I create must not pass through this uh, orifice here. So it has to be larger than this orifice. Otherwise, the uh, thread will come out of the bead cap. So in this case, I will make not one, but several knots to make sure that the knots do not open and that they are large enough to stop the thread from coming out. Beside the knot, you can also add something else and I will show you a safe method to make sure that the thread does not come out. So you can make uh, many knots like these so that they are large enough that they do not come out through this orifice of the bead uh, end. Let's say this is the knot that we have created. To make sure that this end does not open, I will burn it a little bit because it's nylon. It will melt and it will stick to the knot so that the knot has less chances to open. Then I will take the thread, put it on my big eye beading needle like this. You have to take into consideration that sometimes the thread can be uh, cut a little bit at the point where it goes through the needle because the needle is a bit sharp inside here. So it can sometimes cut the thread a little bit. So using more thread than necessary ensures that if the thread is damaged here you can just cut it off. And now I will take one of those crimps and put it on the needle, on the thread, and it will stop, as you can see, in my knot. So let's see from a closer distance. As you can see, I have the knot, and the crimp has stopped right next to my knot. Now I will take the pliers and press on the crimp like this. As you can see, now I made the crimp flat this way and the crimp will prevent the thread from slipping out because we have this knot here. And now we can put the, the bead uh, and cap. So I will take the needle and I will take one of those bead caps like this and I will put the bead cap on my thread like this and as you can see let's see again from a closer distance as you can see inside here we have the knot and the crimp because I pressed on the crimp it has become flat and it is larger than the orifice of my bead uh, end so it will not come out. So this thread will have very small chances to come out of this bead end. That means that we can now close the bead end. I will use the pliers to close the bead end like this. this way and now as you can see the knot and the crimp are both masked inside my bead end here.
And now we should add, uh, add the toggle clasp. I will take one of those jump rings. As I've told you, the jump rings are um, the most used type of finding in handmade jewelry. I've opened the jump ring. I will put it through the ring of my bead and like this and now I will take the toggle clasp and also put it on my jump ring this way and now I can close it I will grab the jump ring with the pliers and I will close it with the jump ring opener this way. Now let's see the result. So as you can see I have the bead cap. Inside the bead cap I have the crimp with a knot which are no longer visible because I closed the bead cap. Then I have the jump ring and the toggle clasp. So the end of the bracelet is finished. The closure of the bracelet. And now let's continue by adding the beads. So as you can see the thread has the tendency to come out of the needle because the needle has this big space here like this. So now let's begin by adding the beads to the bracelet. I will put a bead cap like this at the end so it looks like a flower but it's a little bit longer and it's narrower here so it creates a um, shape of um, V which um, looks better for the end of the bracelet so it gives, gives the shape of the it, it gives an end to our bracelet by uh, this shape of V so I will put first of all the bead cap for the end of my bracelet and then I will start adding the the beads. I will begin with the porcelain beads. Now I will put another cap, a smaller cap. I will put one cap and another cap as you can see they are placed back to back so that they can cover two different beads this way. So as you can see the first bead is covered by the longer bead uh, cap and a small bead cap. I'll put two more bead caps. another porcelain bead two more bead caps a porcelain bead a bead cap this way and now let's put a larger bead cap because we are approaching the middle of our bracelet I will use the larger bead cap because 
of the black beads which are slightly larger than the white beads like this and now we have reached the middle bead which is a metal bead so I chose this metal bead for the center of the bracelet this way and from now on we must be attentive so that the bracelet is symmetrical again I will put a large bead cap the black bead another large bead cap like this and now we'll follow the white china beads and the bead caps and the last bead cap, the longer bead cap like this and now we have finished adding the beads to the bracelet all we have to do now is continue by adding the bead cap at the end the be the the bead end and the toggle clasp so in order to do this I will open this bead end here like this so that I can work inside of the bead end I will put the bead end on my needle like this I'll put one of those crimps on the needle this way and now I can remove the needle now the beads should not be too tight together but also not too loose so they should have a bit of space in between but they should also not be too far away from each other because otherwise uh, the thread will be visible so now I will close the crimp that I have here but taking into consideration that I must leave a bit a millimeter on the thread so that the beads can move a bit and I will press on this crimp like this so that it blocks the movement of the thread and above the crimp I will make a few knots so that the crimp does not slide from the thread this is why I opened this bead end here so that I can make those that I have access and can make the knots above the crimp So 
as you can see I made the first knot above the crimp to block the crimp from moving up and down on the thread let's make another knot and I'll make one last knot and then I will cut the thread This way. Now, as you can see, I have these knots above my crimp. And I will cut the thread. like this and burn the end of the thread with the lighter and now I can close the bead end so that our crimp and the knot is no longer visible this way I'll take the pliers and close like this and uh, now I will attach the toggle clasp. I will take the jump ring, open the jump ring this way. I'll put the jump ring on the bead end, and I will also put the toggle clasp here. like this and now I will close the jump ring this way and we can now open and close the clasp like this and let's see what the finished bracelet looks like so this is our finished bracelet Now let's see what it looks like on the wrist. So this is what the finished bracelet looks like. On the wrist. So I hope you liked this video and thank you for watching. I will show you how to make a bracelet using nylon cord and some beads. I will use black wooden beads and also turquoise beads. I will need a few tools. First of all I will need a measuring tape. For the small parts I can use if I cannot grab the beads with my fingers, I can use some pincers. And for the cord, for the nylon cord, I will need a pair of scissors, 
and a lighter. So I will need two bits of cord. Um, as you can see, I will cut a bit of cord which is longer than the distance around my wrist so there should be a bit of extra cord here so that I can open and close the bracelet with the sliding knot so this cord the first cord is about 14 inches long 14 inches is about 37 38 centimeters long the second bit of nylon cord is a shorter cord that I will use in order to make the sliding knot. So this shorter uh, bit of nylon cord will be about 5 inches long, that is about 13 centimeters long. So this nylon cord will be used for the sliding knot and this one will be used to put the beads on. And now let's start making the bracelet. I will take the uh, nylon cord, the longer nylon cord for the beads and make begin by making a knot at the end of my cord. This way. So I have tightened this knot and this knot here at the end of my cord um, in order to prevent it from opening, I will burn it with my lighter like this and this way it will not open anymore. Now I will take the other end of my cord and I will also burn it to make it pointy like this. If it is pointy this way, it will go through my beads. I will take one of those turquoise beads and put the bead at the end of my cord this way. And now I will start putting my beads on the uh, on the bracelet. So I will alternate turquoise beads and uh, black wooden beads. I will continue putting those beads. So a black bead and a turquoise bead and I will continue putting those beads until I obtain the desired length of my bracelet. And now that I have finished adding the beads, I will put another bead at the end, a uh, turquoise bead at the end of my string and I will make a knot like this. So I will tighten this knot this way. I will take the lighter and burn the end of my knot, melt it so that the knot doesn't open anymore and now I have the ends of the bracelet ornated with some turquoise beads and I will put the other beads in the middle of my bracelet this way I will grab the nylon cord at this point here and I will make a knot to mark the point where the beads will stop And I will also make another knot at the end of these beads here.
this way. As you can see, I have a knot and at the end of my bracelet beads here and here, so that the beads no longer move to the left and to the right. Now I will put the beads away, the turquoise beads, and I will create the sliding knot. So let's see from a closer distance how to create a sliding knot. Uh, first of all, I will superpose the ends of my bracelet like this, and I will take the short nylon cord. I will superpose the ends of my nylon cord so that I find the middle of my nylon cord. I will put the nylon cord underneath the other two cords and I will make a simple overhand knot like this. So I have created a simple knot here. And now I will start making the sliding knot. I will take one of those ends of my sliding knot, put it over the two cords here, then I will take the other uh, cord, I will put it over the first cord here, and then I will put it underneath these two cords here, like this, and now I will take it out through this loop, this way, and I will close the first knot of my sliding knot. So the first loop was on the left side and now I will put the loop on the right side. I will take the other cord, put it over this cord, put it under the, these two cords like this and take it out through this loop here. this way. And I will close the second knot. And again I will make a loop on the left side. So the loops will be made once on the right and once on the left side. I create the loop, I put this other cord over it and take it out through this loop here. Again, I will make the loop on the right side and now, as you can see, uh, the cord is too short, so I will take the scissors. First of all, I will tighten this last knot. I will take the scissors and cut and I will burn with the lighter. Now I will turn the knot, the sliding knot. I will also cut this bit of cord and I will burn the end of the cord. And let's see if the sliding knot is moving. So as you can see it's moving, so let's close the bracelet like this. And as you can see, this is the finished bracelet. Let's see what the bracelet looks like on the wrist. So this is the finished bracelet. This is the sliding knot here. And the bracelet. With turquoise beads and uh, black wooden beads. I will show you how to fix a broken bracelet. As you can see, this stretchy bracelet uh, looks like this. So we have to replace the elastic string. Um, for uh, the replacement, I will use this string.
stretchy elastic string and um, a pair of scissors. I will also need a big eye beading needle for our beads. Now, first of all, we should measure the length of our bracelet. So if we take the measuring tape, we shall see that we have about three and a half inches um, on one side, so it is about seven inches long. So the entire bracelet with the beads should be no more than seven inches long that would be about 18 centimeters long. That means that we need some elastic cord which is a bit longer than that. So I have cut some elastic cord that is about let's see 11 and a half inches long. So that would be about 29 or 30 centimeters long. And now I will take the needle and put the stretchy cord, the elastic cord, through our needle. So, you should be uh, careful because this part of the needle can st sometimes be sharp and it can damage the elastic cord. And now, let's remove the old elastic cord. So, I'll cut the elastic string. And I will remove the beads. This way. So as you can see the elastic cord is no longer elastic. It's broken so we have to remove it. So I'll put the old cord away. And now we have all these beads. I will take the needle with the elastic cord, with the new elastic cord, and I'll start putting the beads on our elastic cord. So I'll put all the beads on the elastic cord. We have only a few more beads. And now I remove the uh, elastic cord and uh, the elastic string from our needle. I'll put the needle away and as you can see I have these two ends of the elastic cord that come out of the beads. 
whenever you string the beads you should make sure that the beads are not too tight together, staying together uh, and they are not too loose either so I will make first of all a simple knot like this this way and then I will make another simple knot this way so I made two simple knots and now I will make another knot that will be using both ends of my elastic cord at the same time so let's first of all tighten the first two knots and now I will take both cords like this I will put my finger this way and I will turn those two cords around my finger and as you can see I have created a loop here and now I will put the cords through the loop that I have created with my finger like this so I have this loop and I will take the two cords through this loop this way so as you can see I have created a loop like this and I will tighten this knot next to the other two knots this way and now I will take each of these two separate strings and pull on them so that the knot does not open so I took one of the strings and pulled on it now let's take the second elastic string and I'll put pull on this elastic string as well this way and now we can cut the two cords with the scissors and as you can see our bracelet is finished So this is how you fix a broken elastic bracelet. I hope you liked the video and I hope that now you know how to replace the elastic string of a stretchy bracelet. I will show you how to make a bracelet um, using charms and um, porcelain uh, beads. So these will be the china beads that I will use. So as you can see the beads are black and white. And they are made of china, of porcelain. Um, I will also use these beads in the shape of flowers and also these oval beads. metal beads um, for the central part of uh, the bracelet I will use this bead in the shape of a tube here another metal bead a distancing bead spacer bead 
uh, and I will also need some charms and I've chosen these metal charms in the shape of feathers and now let's talk about the findings uh, I will use this closure for the bracelet Of course I will also use these white beads, I forgot to tell you about these small white beads. Um, and um, I will also need some crimps. And uh, some bead caps for the end of the bracelet. And the jump rings which are a type of finding that is used very often when you make jewelry in order to make the bracelet I will also need some nylon cord, ni nylon string I've used this black nylon string and now let's talk about the, fi uh, the um, tools that I will use so I will use this needle which is called the big eye beading needle in order to put the beads on this thread and also for the thread I will need a pair of scissors and a lighter while for the findings I will need <coughs> tools such as the pliers I have different types of pliers here. These are the chain nose pliers. As you can see they are flat here, they have no teeth to prevent them from scratching my findings and also the jump ring opener for the jump rings. And now that we have talked about the beads, the um, charms, the um, tools and the findings Let's begin making our bracelet. Uh, the first step is to take the thread and to make some knots, one or two knots, at the end of our thread. Remember that since you have these bead caps, the shape of the knot is not so relevant because it will be hidden by the bead cap so it doesn't matter uh, if your knot does not look very aesthetic because it will be hidden by this bead cap and it will be invisible so if you want you can make even three knots like this to make sure that your bracelet does not open and now that I have made the knot at the end of my cord, I will cut um, the end of the nylon thread and I will use the lighter to burn the remainder of the thread so that we have this knot exactly at the end of this uh, piece of thread nylon thread now I will put the thread through my needle and I will take one of those crimps and I will put the crimp on my needle like this and move it towards the end of my um, thread next to the knot now with the pliers I will press on my crimp this way and as you can see the crimp is exactly next to my knot this way now um, I will take one of those bead caps and put the bead cap on my thread like this 
and as you can see the knot and the crimp are inside of my bead cap now all we have to do is close this bead cap this way and as you can see I have a beautiful bead at the end of my string so the knot as well as the crimp are no longer visible here because they are covered by this bead cap now I will continue by taking one of those jump rings and I will open the jump ring so in order to open the jump ring you can use either two pliers or a plier and the jump ring opener now as you can see I opened this jump ring and I will take the bead cap and put the jump ring through the bead cap end here and I will take the toggle clasp like this and put it on my jump ring and now I will close the jump ring this way and I have created the end of my bracelet like this now again I will put the thread through the needle and I will start adding the beads on the thread and now that we have um, added the toggle clasp at the end I will put the thread on my needle and I will start adding the beads the first step will be to add some black and white beads at the end of my bracelet this way and now I will start adding the porcelain bead the metal bead the porcelain bead the next metal bead now I will put the first charm another bead another metal bead the second charm another porcelain bead then I will put a metal flower bead a white bead and now I have reached the central spacer bead and I have created the half of the bracelet and let's continue I will put the other beads symmetrically the rest of my beads symmetrically so I put the white bead the metal flower bead the first ceramic bead the feather charm the first feather charm another metal bead another porcelain bead the smaller feather charm and
and the rest of my beads. And now let's close the bracelet with the white and black beads. This way. And now I have added all the beads on the bracelet and we have to close the bracelet now. Now in order to close the bracelet I will begin by putting the bead cap on the thread like this. Then I will take the crimp and put the crimp on my needle too. this way and I will remove the needle and I will make sure that the there is some space between the beads so that they do not they are not too compressed and I will press on my crimp And now that we have the crimp here, above the crimp I will make a knot to make sure that the crimp doesn't slip off the thread. Now I will cut the end of the thread with the scissors. I will take the lighter and burn the end of the thread. Like this. And the next step is to close the bead cap so that the crimp is no longer visible and the knot. this way. Now I will take the jump ring and open the jump ring. So I will grab it with the pliers and open it with the jump ring opener. So I will open it a bit more so that the toggle clasp can be put on the jump ring like this. So I have put the toggle clasp on the jump ring. Now I will put the jump ring through the bead end. And I will close the jump ring. this way. Like this. And now I have also attached the end of the toggle clasp and the bracelet is ready.
And this is what the finished bracelet looks like. And this is what the bracelet looks like on the wrist. So I hope that you uh, like this bracelet and I hope that you liked this uh, video.